In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Thank you, and good morning. Welcome as we gather on this 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Also a very special weekend in our diocese called Catholic Charities Sunday, acknowledging and praying in great gratitude for the multiple ministries of Catholic Charities to people in need, to the disabled, in support of family life in so many different ways. And so we thank God for their great, great ministries. And I'm privileged to serve on the board of directors also for Catholic Charities for our diocese. So what a privilege to gather at Eucharist this morning. And so let us prepare to celebrate our mass as we call to mind and acknowledge our sins and acknowledge our need for God's divine mercy that we might more worthily celebrate this Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you show us the living face of our compassionate God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us how to love God with all our being. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us how to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we, glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten, begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner towards him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love, I love you, you, Lord, my, my strength. strength. My God, my rock, my refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great <clears throat> victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord, my strength. strength. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. You and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, 
and how you turned from God to idols to serve the, the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they together gathered, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment of the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the greatest in the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful to gather in this beautiful fall Sunday morning in praise of our God, in praise of the goodness of the faith we share together. And in this fall, as we come to the end of the month of October, and next weekend we will celebrate All Saints and All Souls Day and lead us closer and closer to the end of this liturgical year, the readings continually focus us on the, on the end of time. And very specifically, as we celebrate this, this feast today, we're with Jesus, who is very close to the end of his time in this world, as he has entered the city of Jerusalem, as we have heard in the last couple of weeks, and now in about the final week of his earthly human life and ministry. And so it's in Jerusalem that those in great opposition to, of, of him were continually plotting against him. They became more and more menacing, almost circling, circling like, a, like a whole team of buzzards ready to hone in on the, for the last kill and for, to be able to do away with this Jesus Christ. And it is in the midst of the challenges that we've heard these last couple of weeks, including today's gospel, it's in the midst of that that Jesus actually puts his accusers on the defensive by the way he answers their challenges and their questions. We have to remember that the scribes and the Pharisees were the, the true masters of the law of Moses. And remembering, too, that from Moses' time, there were 613 laws in Jewish tradition, the laws of Moses that had to do with every aspect of faithful Jewish people's lives. And so it's these masters that certainly knew the letters of the law and strove not only for themselves to live it by the letter of the law, but expected everybody else to do the same. And so as they were challenging Jesus with different aspects of the law, as is true in this morning's gospel, is that they really certainly knew the answer before they even asked Jesus, which is the greatest of all of those 600 some commandments or the Ten Commandments of Moses, which one is the greatest? So Jesus quotes something that was so familiar to every faithful Jew that was very much a part of their everyday prayer called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with your whole strength. And then would go on in that reality. And it was Jesus then who also attached from the Mosaic Law that you will also love your neighbor as yourself. And so it is that proclamation that Jesus gave to them that was the right answer. The answer certainly that they knew. And it is that goodness that coupled with that first reading from Isaiah that it is Jesus who, and the Lord who reminds us that a very primary agenda of our God is that our whole lives are permeated by that very shema, that 
first commandment of loving God with everything that we had, how that affects our lives, our choices, our behaviors, our values, our morals, all of those kind of realities each and every day determines how we are faithful. And a lot of that faithfulness has to do with, like Isaiah was saying, how do we take care of other people? The scriptures are over and over again about that. Not just how we take care of ourselves, but how we are fine-tuned in our antenna of life to be especially attentive to the needs of the poor and the widows and the disabled and those who are very, very vulnerable in our society. True for the time of Isaiah, hundreds of years before Christ. True in Jesus' time true for us today in our modern, modern time. And so it's precisely what captures the essence of all of those 613 Jewish laws of Moses, captures the, the essence of the Ten Commandments, captures the essence of the Beatitudes and everything that Jesus would teach that have to flow from and lead us more deeply into this whole relationship of love with our God as the primary focal point and power and strength and definition for who we are and how we care about and how we love each other. And so it's also very much a part of that understanding that we're reminded in these readings today and always in our faith is that to love God is to love other people. They can't be separated. We can't say, oh, yes, God, I believe in you and I love you, and then hold any kind of contempt or malice or ill will toward another person. And we might very well do that, but we all, always have to be a part of that conversion of allowing our love for God to be translated as we who are created in the image and likeness of God of how we love other people. And so we're always working at conversion. We're always working at forgiveness. We're always working at being able to reach out in greater and greater, greater attention and care for other people. Not again just worrying about our own kingdoms and our own comforts and our own securities. And so for us to really know the extent of how we love, how much we love God, is to look at our everyday living. And what are the priorities of our lives? And how much are we continually working at, again, expressing and living that love to other people? And on this weekend in our diocese, we celebrated a very special way Catholic charities. And again, it's become closer and closer in my heart, not only as a priest of the diocese, but being serving on the board of directors and learning more about the extent of the great ministries and support that Catholic Charities offers to you and to so many people throughout our whole diocese. And so we are invited in a special way to learn, but also to keep all of those involved with, with Catholic Charities to, that they might continue to fulfill their mission, which is all about translating that love of God into that love of neighbor and very profound care for people. And so it is how they fulfill the mission, all of those involved with Catholic Charities, with great care and compassion, with mercy, again, to the poor, the vulnerable, the disabled, and so many people, and why working so much at a greater and greater partnership between the apostolate to the handicap and Catholic Charities for a greater goodness and a greater support and ministries of all of you as well as people everywhere, no matter what their abilities might be. And so knowing always that Catholic Charities operates with great respect and a great dignity for all of human night, for every human person, for all of human life. And so as we listen to that gospel today and continue to be challenged as how effectively we have grown and continue to grow as disciples of the Lord, our whole lives are continually oriented toward that love of God with everything that we have and how we live that in our love for other people, no matter who they are, and no matter how close or stranger they might happen to be. May God bless us in all of our ministries. I believe in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray for the needs of our world and for the grace to be models of the great commandments. That we may believe that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ and members of God's family, called to love all others just as God loves us, and so grow to love our neighbors as ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and the leaders of all faiths, that they may be instruments of inspiring Christians everywhere to be constant witnesses to the beauty and power of the great commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For peace among nations, throughout our country, in our local communities, and may God give the grace of courage to all who work for peace, seeking new opportunities to resolve differences. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are working to curtail the Ebola virus epidemic, for the health and safety of all who are suffering from this disease, for their families and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who live with challenges each day, for the sick, the elderly, those with disabilities, and for the poor and homeless among us. May they find comfort in God's living presence, especially ministered through caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Father Michael Ritchell, the intention of this Mass. For Joseph Stotz, a longtime volunteer with the Apostolate. For all who have died, and for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for the intentions we now offer from the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, you have always heard those who cry out to you. Hear our concerns and teach us how to love as you have taught. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thanks, Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, 
whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have done and pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's minister his word of peace to those near us. Peace be with you, Garrett. With your yeah. spirit. Peace be with you, Hogan. Thanks. Peace be with you, Garrett. Okay. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed.
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our presider this morning was Father Larry Bakke, pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe and director of the Apostolate to the Handicapped, the Diocese of Madison. On behalf of Father Larry and this diocesan apostolate, thank you for sharing in this Eucharistic celebration this morning. We are able to share in the celebration of faith and Eucharistic thanks to the generosity of the management and staff of Channel 3 and their continued public service and social concern for now 47 years for the homebound, disabled, elderly, and for all who are dealing with the struggles of life. Sister Bernadette Prohaska, FSPA, provided our music ministry today. Michelle Guyette interpreted the Mass for our deaf community members. I am Garrett Martin, and Hogan Edwards and Gabe Witt were our acolytes. We are members of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe. I also am the coordinator of youth and young adult ministry for our parish and assistant to the Apostolate to the Handicap. Please join us every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. on Channel 3 to share in this program of hope and inspiration. Until then, do make it a beautiful week. And in the message of today's psalm, love the Lord, for God is your strength, your rock, and Savior.